Hey guys, welcome to 7 Minutes Math. Today we're going to tackle one problem that actually deals with why pi occurs into a situation where one would not actually expect that it would appear in, uh, in the result. The problem that we will um, analyze today, we're looking at a sheet of paper that is actually divided into equal parts and each part here has height one unit. And we also have one needle that is actually a bit longer but it also has a height of one unit. So the question now deals with um, what is the probability that if you throw the needle on this paper that it would actually hit one line here. There's a probability that it doesn't hit it looking like this or looking like this but it can also happen in certain situation that the needle will hit it. And the question is what is the actual probability that this happens and what we will prove is that the probability that the needle actually touches one of these lines would be 2 over pi. Now it is obviously from the start that this would not be a result that you would expect to, to actually see. So let's analyze a little bit and see what is actually happening. Let's take two parallel lines that will be for example these lines over here and just draw them a little bit more separate here so that we, we can see what's happening. We're also going to draw here the middle line in between these, um, in between the, them two. And here's what we're going to, to, um, to see. Let's assume that what's happening is that the needle falls on the upper side. This is the center of the needle and it will go, let's say for example, like this. Right, this is the center of, of the needle and we will consider the distance between this point here and the upper line, it's um, d. We will take a line, for example, let's use again the blue, which is parallel here, that goes right to the middle of the needle, and the distance between the tipping point here and the line, which is this one, let's call it h. The angle here we call it theta. Now what is obviously from, uh, from the start is that um, we are getting at this point this length here is 1 over 2 and we can express this h as being equal to um, 1 over 2 times sine of theta. And this is because the sine of theta is h divided by 1 over, um, 1 over 2. We can actually think of this as being a function that's h of theta, right? This is um, the way we can think about it, sine of theta divided by 2. And the condition here that um, the needle actually touches this line is that h is greater than d. So we have to look for touch is equivalent to h being greater, let's say also equal, than, than d. Now when we are looking at what this actually means, let's draw it and put these values in a, in a graph. We can see that d is going in between values from 0 all the way to 1 over, uh, over 2. And this is because we are from the start thinking that the middle point right here will be in the upper part. If it happens so that it will be in the uh, lower part, we will consider this in a symmetric way. So we can consider this without actually um, reducing the, the, general, um, the general case. Also, what is happening is that we can consider theta as being bet in between 0 and pi and if it so happens that theta is greater than pi, so that it looks like this, we are actually in a symmetrical case because there is no uh, direction of, of the needle. So also theta here belongs to um, 0 to um, to pi. When we are drawing now the actual graph, we can see that h of theta looks like this. And the point here will be 1 over 2. This is um, the origin of, um, of the axis and this is the function h of theta.
Now, D is actually in between 0, 1 over 2, so D will be in the same area, right? right here. So now the question is, in order to have this touch, what does it mean that h is greater than d? It actually means that this function, which is h of theta, always must lie above the value of d. And because d is also located in between 0 and 1 over 2, let's draw this rectangle right over here. And whenever h of theta will be somewhere on this curve, d can be on above it or, or below it. So the probability actually that h is greater than d is actually the probability that the point d will lie here under, under this graph. This now becomes a question of probability in terms um, of, of areas. So when we are questioning now what does it mean that this area here is computed and we can easily um, easily see it's actually the integral of this value. So let's see again what does it mean to have a touch. The touch, uh, the probability to, to have a touch is actually the probability the area under h of theta divided by area of rectangle. So going further with the computation right now, this is the area of the rectangle. It's easy to compute. It's pi times 1 divided by 2. So it's pi like this. And the area uh, under the h of theta is actually the integral between 0 and pi of 1 divided by 2 sine theta d theta. And going further with the computation, this here converts 2 over pi integral of sine of theta d theta. And this is equal to these terms here. Cancel each other. It's 1 over pi times minus cosine of theta. And this is in between the values 0 and pi. And this further computes as, so it's minus cosine of theta is cosine of um, pi is minus 1 with a minus here goes to 1. Cosine of 0 is 1 with the minus in front of it. It will go plus 1 and you have here 2 over pi. So this actually proves why the probability to have uh, the needle touching one point it's 2 over pi. Now maybe you are wondering what is the situation when again you have the needle with an angle more than pi as explained earlier you don't actually need to care about the situation because it is a symmetrical situation. If you have uh, the midpoint of the needle falling into the actual second uh, half, the one that's below, again, the, the situation is, um, is symmetrical. We've only analyzed um, what happens if it's in one of these cases, if it goes above them, you have one, two, three, four, five. So the probability to analyze one of them, it's one over five, it's 20%, but it's multiplied again by five times because uh, you can be in either of the situation and the probability will actually come back always to um, two over pi. This is the case because the length of the needle is one. This is maybe one interesting aspect. And because it's one, it's actually fully covering the distance in between two lines. That's what's uh, creating that no matter how you hit it, um, you will have two over pi. The situation would be a little bit different, for example, if the needle would be smaller. If the needle would be one third or, um, or one half, then you would have here a possibility that if the midpoint would touch, uh, let me draw it again, if the midpoint touches in a certain area, then it will never actually touch the two, the two side line here. And then the probabilities would be a bit less. Final question is this one, why pi? Because it shouldn't actually um, occur or it's not naturally seen that this would occur. This is actually happening because it is in a certain way, although it looks like you have parallel lines here, uh, you shouldn't have pi. It is a problem of rotation because there is a certain rotation of, um, of the needle that hits here the, the line. And whenever you have a rotation, well, they're just great odds that pi just 
pops out out of the blue. That was it for today. Thank you for watching us. Seven minutes math. Have a good day.